That was beautiful. It was. And it showed how ice crystals grow when water turns into ice. I'm guessing that this microscopic phenomenon has something to do with the substances that keep water from freezing. You're right. The antifreeze substances inhibit ice crystal growth. One type is called antifreeze protein. This is a liquid containing antifreeze protein, and it was used to study antifreeze protein's outstanding effects. Two drops of water are arranged on a glass slide. The one on the left is ordinary water. The one on the right is water that contains a slight amount of antifreeze protein. They are both cooled at once. Because of the lighting, the rim of the drops will turn gold when it freezes. The ordinary water turns gold, but only the outer edge of the water containing antifreeze protein turns gold. For the most part, it retains its liquid state. I see. Just to confirm, these two drops are being cooled under the same conditions? Yes. Yet the one containing antifreeze protein doesn't freeze easily. Most people know that dissolving a large amount of salt or sugar into water makes it harder to freeze, but antifreeze proteins work in a different way. So how does antifreeze protein keep water from freezing? Let's find out. Antifreeze protein. This mysterious protein was first discovered in the blood of a genus of cod ice fish that lives in the Antarctic Ocean. Ocean water contains salt and does not freeze even when it reaches temperatures below zero. The fish are not able to regulate their body temperature and so are believed to have this antifreeze protein to prevent their blood from freezing. antifreeze protein. They are hemming in the crystal. However, one side hasn't been covered by the antifreeze protein. An analysis of the antifreeze protein in flounders revealed that the protein has a helical structure. At a microscopic level, an ice crystal's hydrogen and oxygen atoms create hexagons that are connected to each other. So the surface is bumpy like this. The helical structure of the antifreeze protein causes it to fit neatly with this bumpy surface. This prevents new water molecules from sticking and inhibits ice growth. So the secret was in the shape of the antifreeze protein. It fits perfectly to the ice's bumpy surface. It's very clever that living things have this kind of protein. When water freezes, it increases in volume and causes cells to rupture. It's believed that the antifreeze protein is created in response to the cold. And it's not just found in animals either. Some vegetables have it as well. Yes, it's recently been learned that antifreeze proteins are present in about 80% of all winter vegetables. However, the protein is only produced in cold environments. So, for example, Japanese radishes grown after May will not have an antifreeze protein. What about humans? Do we have antifreeze protein in our bodies? Unfortunately, we don't have it. 
But that's because we are capable of maintaining body temperature. Of course. Antifreeze protein could be very useful and has many potential applications. Take a look at this. The fish that we regularly enjoy is often frozen to preserve its freshness. However, when it's thawed, there is a loss of moisture called drip, which contains a lot of the fish's flavor. This drip loss is caused by ice crystals. Ice crystals grow particularly well in a certain temperature zone. It's between zero degrees Celsius and minus seven degrees Celsius. In this temperature zone, the ice crystals grow rapidly, destroying the cell tissues around them. This causes the moisture and umami to leak out. The introduction of flash freezing techniques made it possible to zip past this temperature zone and prevent cell damage during the freezing process. However, the same problem re-emerges during the thawing process. Because the temperature rises slowly, the ice crystals grow rapidly in the problem temperature zone and destroy the cells. It became necessary to find a way to prevent ice crystal growth during this stage. An antifreeze protein was eyed as a potential solution. This is normally what happens when flash frozen pork is thawed. This is drip. As you can see, it's also forming on the meat's surface. On the other hand, the ice crystals in the meat with the antifreeze protein remain small and grew very little. This shows that antifreeze protein effectively prevents cell damage. It would be great if we could prevent drip loss in the thawing process. Yes. Although it's called antifreeze protein, it's not that it doesn't freeze at all. It's partially frozen, but keeps the ice crystals very small. So all you need to do is soak food in antifreeze protein and freeze it. Not really. For example, even if you soaked meat in an antifreeze protein solution, the solution would only stick to the surface of the meat. This means that the ice crystals inside the meat would grow and you'd still end up with a lot of drip. Before we can use it at home, Someone needs to develop an appliance that can get the antifreeze protein solution into the meat instantaneously. Are there any foods on the market that already use antifreeze protein? Yes, they are frozen udon noodles. The ratio of antifreeze protein to flour is 0.03%. It allows the noodles to retain their texture even after thawing. That is great. So antifreeze protein really has the potential to improve the taste and quality of frozen foods. Yes, but it has its weaknesses. First, it's weak to acid. Take a look at this. The protein's antifreeze function hardly works on foods or liquids with a pH less than six, for example, green tea, black tea, and other acidic foods. I see, so it wouldn't work on foods that include vinegar. No, it wouldn't. The second thing is that it's weak to heat. Let's look at the next graph. If the antifreeze protein is heated for longer than 20 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, it loses its antifreeze function. Proteins in general are weak to acid and heat, and antifreeze protein is no different. Isn't there a way to get past these issues? Antifreeze protein has so many potential applications. Researchers were wondering the same thing. After an extensive search, they found a substance that isn't a protein, 
but that has similar functions as antifreeze protein.